in this video we're going to start looking at the effect of the amount of string between the nut and the machine head. The archetype for this is going to be the Fender Stratocaster where you'll have a series of machine heads at a very steep angle. The basic question is does the amount of metal here have an effect on the string tension on the playing side? Here are two idealised diagrams. This is the bridge, this is the nut, this is the tuning peg. Bridge, nut, tuning peg. And in both cases I've given these strings notional tensions of 10 kilos. If you look at what happens in this case, if I try to play the string, this is the vibrating length of the string. It has a 10 kilo pull strength, it has a fixed length and a particular thickness. It will vibrate at a particular frequency and let's say that's E. If I move to the other situation where I've got a very long piece of string between the nut and the tuning peg, I have got the bridge, the nut, a distance between them, it's the same gauge string and it's the same pull strength. This is the bit that vibrates. Because everything about here and here is identical, these two pieces of string will vibrate at the same frequency. There is no difference in the tension caused by the different string lengths. However, the situation is made a little more complicated by the fact that we don't just play these strings as open strings. We fret them and we bend them and here there is a slight difference. In the first case here we're going to clamp the string here and here so that there is precisely no string effectively between the nut and the tuning head. We've clamped the string so all string that exists for any practical purpose is between here and here. In the second situation we're going to make this string infinitely long. What's going to be the difference? With this string here, if I bend it, what will happen is that there is absolutely nowhere for the string to go. The only possible place I can get extra metal is by stretching the bonds between the atoms. Here the string tension will go up quite considerably so the pitch will increase. This will happen when I fret the string and it will also happen when I do a string bend. In this situation however the exact opposite is true. If I try to bend this string down what will happen is because I've got an infinite amount of metal on this side, I have effectively created a magic metal making factory at this side of the nut. No matter how much I pull on the string here, there is always more metal that will be pulled through. So no matter how much I stretch this string, the tension will never change. This means that although this string will feel easier to play, it won't change the tension when I fret it, when I bend it. It also means that there will be no change in the pitch when I try a, a string bend. These are clearly two extreme situations and this one is obviously physically unrealistic. If we make it slightly more realistic and we turn this into a Fender Stratocaster, then we can see that we've got perhaps a couple of centimetres of metal here and we have perhaps 10 or 12 centimetres of metal here. It's not as extreme, but if we have the same gauge string, then in both cases, when we try to bend the string, we'll see that here, the reservoir of spare string, if you like, is very small. So the pitch, when we do a string bend, will increase quite noticeably. So that when we do a string bend, the pitch 
for a given displacement will be quite noticeable. With the other string, when we bend the string, there'll also be an increase in the string tension. But we've got a slightly greater reservoir of metal to pull through. So whilst this string will feel slightly slacker, it also means that we've got to bend it further in order to get a particular pitch change. And unfortunately this is where messy real life comes into play because of course we've got different thickness strings. This generally speaking will be an unwound top E string whereas this one is liable to be a wound bottom E string. So this will be thicker and you will have the windings which are going to cause greater friction at this point. So it's impossible to quantify exactly how much effect this is going to have. Clearly there will be some effect. You do have a substantial amount of string here compared to here. But how much that will affect the playing is going to depend on all sorts of factors. It will depend on the friction in the nut. It will depend on whether this is a wound string or whether it's a smooth string. It will depend on how much metal you have on this side of the nut. So in summary, yes, if you lock down the strings at the nut and the bridge, the string will feel stiffer because as you bend it, there is no reservoir of metal and the string will be more responsive to string bends. On the other hand, if you don't lock down the string at the nut and you have a long piece of string between the nut and the tuning peg, the string will feel looser to play when you stretch it. However, it means that you will also need to bend the string further in order to get a particular pitch change. So if you want to do a Dave Gilmore impression, this setup is going to be somewhat easier than this because you may end up finding you have to bend the strings an unreasonable distance in order to get a particular pitch change. However, the length of this piece of string here will not make any difference whatsoever to the tension in the tuned string. The pitch of this piece of string is set only by the string length string thickness and the tension and if this piece of string is the same as this piece of string it only matters what happens between the nut and the bridge what happens outside of that is irrelevant so the tension in the string is the same the only difference will be when you try doing string bends and you'll find that this string feels marginally slacker to play Thank you for watching.